What's up guys? Welcome back to Dive In Garage. We're continuing on our 350 small block Chevy build. And we're finally getting to the good stuff. Today, we're gonna be installing some eBay heads. Let's dive in. First up for our cylinder head assembly, is we're gonna be putting in some head studs. Now, you can see there, that doesn't say ARP. We're gonna be trying out some DNA motoring head studs. So if you don't know DNA motoring, you'll find these guys on Amazon. And they're known for not some pretty good products. I've seen some other videos seen some testing, some torture testing of these products, and they're pretty good. So, let's get these bad boys in. Alright, so before you go and cra getting crazy and putting your head studs in with no sealant, don't forget, you need sealant on your studs. Pretend that they're your bolts. So, this stuff here works pretty good. It's nice and tacky. Dries pretty quick. Uh, you can be uh, pretty generous. Get it on there. Give it a nice spin. That'll do the trick. It dries up pretty fast. So you get a nice coating on these. Then we can get them in the engine. Alright, so let me give you a quick tour of these heads. Aluminum much lighter then we got screw in studs no more pressing studs so that's awesome and the valve guides come ready for 530 viton seals so there's actually a step if you can see it it's 530 up here and 560 down at the shoulder and they have accommodations for both the perimeter and the center valve covers so that's great and speaking of multiple accommodations check this out they got for your Vortec intakes and your older style intakes. So you have a choice. So that's great. The first things I'll tell you about these heads is that uh, you're going to need to do some cleanup. Don't expect to bolt these on and go. Uh, let me see if I can show you on this side. There we go. So check out the, these are the intakes. There's the coolant. So it's not awful. But it's also not great. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely going to need to spend some time with the Dremel or whatever tool you like to use to clean these up. Let me get it off so I can show you the chamber. As you can see, I already started doing some work on the other head, some of the remnants. So, yeah, look at that. We're going to need to do some cleanup here. If you want to do a full port and polish job, it's up to you. But definitely going to need some cleanup. These are uh, 64 cc chambers though, with the angle plug, so that's great. Otherwise, decks come great. Everything, everything's awesome. Like these heads, they're they may be your white box heads, but hey, they're pretty good. All right, nobody said eBay heads were high quality, but they are cheap. See that down there? What in the world is that? Wow, I hate to have that flowing through your cooling system. Alrighty, so I'm going to show you all a little bit of the cleanup process. So, as far as tools go, I'm going to go ahead and use my Dremel. And you'll see an assortment of bits here. Uh, different bits for different parts of the head. You got some cones, you got some solid flats, you got some skinny flats. And then this one, I think by far, is the best for removing material. This is a single cutter. You'll notice there's only cutting edges in one direction because this is aluminum. So if you use uh, a double cutter, it's going to get clogged up immediately. So don't do that and uh, just figure out what works. Get a whole, get an assortment. Figure out what works best. I really like this one too. Um, but then once you're done removing material from where you, wherever you're trying to do, whether it be uh, porting a different head or just some cleanup, once you're done with that, you're going to want to buff it out. So this was a 180 grit buffing wheel this is a 240 so these are obviously consumable buy a couple of those uh, this process is pretty easy um, when you get your tool with whatever bit you want on there what you're trying to do is just even motions move it about this pace right here you don't want to go too fast if you go too slow it'll really start digging in and you'll clog up your bit so figure out what works best um, take it slow 
a lot of people will freak out and say you could damage your heads, you can ruin them, you can make them junk. But just take it easy and you can do it. Remember, we're trying to do this all ourselves without taking it to the machine shop. So if you just take it easy, you can do it. Alright, so I thought the camera was recording. All I did was clean up this area here, and there, and I'm working on this one here. And then we'll move on to the other intake runners. All right, so moving on to the other side of the intake, right under the valves. First things about this area is you want to watch out for the valve seat. While you're grinding away, uh, try not to nick that area. You might mess up your uh, valve angle job. So uh, let's get in there. Let's clean all this trash up so we can get a better finish. Well, that just happened. Lost my bit. All right, back at it. All right, and it's looking better. It's not perfect. We're not really going for perfect. We're going for better. And after a buff and a polish, it's gonna look a lot smoother than it does right now. So basically that's the process. Pretty straightforward. Uh, biggest points are be careful, go slow, and just take some time to learn it. Uh, take some time to figure out which bit works best for which application. And uh, you know, have a little bit of fun with it. Not everybody takes this step, so enjoy. I'll go ahead and knock out the rest and I'll, we'll catch back up. All right, so another thing we're gonna do is all we're gonna do is touch up these uh, valve guides here with our valve guide cutter. So this is a 530 valve guide cutter. Uh, it's only gonna go down just to the shoulder. And again, they're already cut for this. So all we're doing here is just cleaning them up, make sure they're good to go. Oh, for this uh, cutter, uh, it's pretty, it's from Cop, pretty easy. You need to make sure you get the right size cutter you want. You need to buy the Arbor. And uh, the Arbor is a little bit of an expense, but it works for more than just a valve guide cutter. You can also get the spring seat cutter that it'll work for. So it's got more than one use. So I think it's worth it. That's all you do. You put the Arbor into the valve guide, go medium speed, and you can go down up a couple times. But again, here, all we're doing is touching them up. If you're doing like say an iron head and you're doing this for the first time, you're going to, you're going to be putting some cutting down, but, uh, it was pretty easy. Alrighty, now that we're done with all the polishing work, we're going to get on to lapping the valves to make sure we get a good seal. Uh, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need a uh, valve lapping tool. Get that at your local auto parts store. You're going to need some layout fluid. And you're going to need some valve grinding compound. So the process is pretty easy. We're going to start here with the number 8 cylinder. I just did the intake. The exhaust will be the same exact process. So once you start this process, the valves that you put in this combustion chamber 
uh, are going to be mated to this for the rest of the build. So don't get them mixed up. Uh, use your layout fluid to mark them. So take this here and give your um, valve seat a good coating. All right, now once you've done that, go ahead and put the valve back in, see what we can get a starting point. So this is the exhaust valve. We'll use the small end of this tool here. Pretty easy, just use some suction, so you just push down. Okay, now you got it on there. What you're gonna do is you're going to move your hands back and forth in a motion like you're trying to start a fire with sticks. So, like I said, uh, you don't need to do really a lot of down pressure, just a, just a bit. Um, but you don't want to lift because that's going to defeat the purpose. So just do a little motion like this. Uh, this would only stay on there. Okay, once you get a little bit of motion on there, you'll be able to see, see if I can get you in here, where it's actually contacting. You see that little band right about there? That's where we're making contact. So contact is a little thin. So we're gonna go ahead and get our grinding compound out. And all you gotta do is get a little bit of this stuff and spread it around your seat and then do the same motion. And while you're doing this, you're gonna notice that it's really loud and it uh, sounds very aggressive in the beginning. That's fine. And over time, as a grinding compound is doing its thing, you notice it gets smoother and it's not as loud. That's totally fine. Gonna get your valve, throw it back in there, and the same thing. All right, now, after a while, take your valve out, give it a check. Let's see how we're doing now. So if you can tell, our contact patch there is quite a bit bigger. It looks like we need to do a little bit more grinding, but we're getting better. So that's the quick and dirty on how to do it. Now, just do the rest of them. No big deal, right? So I ran into a bit of a snag here. After lapping the valves, I thought it'd be good to move on to getting the springs installed. And uh, I ordered uh, 100 over valves because uh, I had to use a locator, which is 60 thou thick. And I thought that would allow me to just use a couple shims and be good to go. But I went to go to measure it with the uh, spring height measuring tool, Amazon, 10 bucks. Um, but it was coming out to 1.95 and these springs are spec to be installed at 1.7 so quite a bit off so uh, not much i can do I, I can get 50 under valve locks i could do a huge stack of shims but i don't want to stack up four or five shims i'd rather get shorter valves and just do a couple shims so that's what i'm gonna end up doing and um, in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and move on to some, a couple other things. 
So while we're waiting on those, we'll try to be productive. Alrighty, well, now we're gonna work on getting the oil pump cleaned up and get that put back in. If you're not using a steel collar on your oil pump shaft, look into it. A lot of failures associated with those plastic shafts that so sometimes they give you in, in some kits, but you want the steel shaft or the steel collar. So I can see some crud here in the pickup, so let me see if I can get some of that out. Uh, mystery gunk is that. can see something in there. Whoa, what the heck? Holy crap. I don't think you can be able to see that. There. Do you see it? Way down there. Why the heck is there a spring in there? <laughs> what the heck? What? <laughs> Look at this. What is it? What is that even for? Is that a distributor spring? How in the world did that get down into the oil pump pickup? <laughs> this is nuts. This is nuts. What else is in there? Want some more mystery goo? I can't even tell what that stuff is. Oh, that looks like all the big stuff. I'll hit it with some brake clean or whatever else I got laying around. But why in the world was there a spring in that oil pump pickup? How did this get down there? What in the world? That was nuts. No clue why that spring was in there. But, oh well, got it out. Flip this bad boy over. Get this oil pump reinstalled. In case you're wondering, this is a Melling 55 high volume. Not high pressure, high volume. Better view here. Here we go. All right, now let me let me check the spec for this real quick. All right, spec here is sixty-five foot pounds. Yep. And let me take a quick sec. If you don't have the book for your truck or your car, whatever it is you're working on, I recommend get it. There's a lot of good and also a lot of bad info on the internet. So if you're questioning like a torque setting, go with the book. Perfect. Alrighty, so now that we got that on there, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in a oil pan stud kit. Is this required? No, no it's not, but I've always wanted to do this, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And um, could you just use bolts? For sure, could you use the stock bolts? Definitely, but one thing I found is that if you're gonna to upgrade to the uh, thicker blue gasket, driving those stock bolts in there is kind of a pain. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the stud kit, give me a little bit extra length. So I put in the pan and the gasket on and off, it'll be a little easier. All right, got those in, no problem. Now, I'm just gonna set the oil pan on here just for now, honestly, just so it's out of the way in my shop and I don't have to worry about messing it up. Got it painted up. I'm just gonna loosely snug down these bolts. Cool, got a couple of them on, no big deal. Flip it back over, 
and put the cam and timing set on. Get those in. Maybe we can get the cam zeroed for now. We can degree it later on. Once the uh, once the heads are ready to go. Hopefully it won't take too long. Alright, so this here is the cam we're gonna be using. It's a 230, 236 at 50 thousandths. This is a hydraulic roller cam. So this thing's pretty gunky. I'm gonna go get it cleaned up. I'll get it lubed up and we'll put it in. All right, so we got the cam in. Uh, I thought I'd show you real quick my trick. So they sell a handle for doing this online for, I don't know, 30 bucks. Or you can just go down to your hardware store, grab some long bolts. There's a nice handle for you right there. Pretty easy. Yep, now let's go and I'll get the number one piston in top dead center and then we'll throw on the timing chain. All right, so to set zero for your number one cylinder at top dead center, what you're gonna need is a deck bridge. They sell these with magnets and without magnets. Uh, this is a non-magnetic version, as you can see there, but since I have studs, I can use those to locate it. Pretty awesome, and you'll see it's resting right there on that stud in this pin here, and look where it lands. Perfect. Uh, so this process is pretty easy. Uh, loosen up your, your gauge here. I had already done it. I'll, I'll get it off just to show you. And then uh, rotate, your, rotate your assembly. Until it makes contact, and then you'll see the needle move. You know, see where it starts going back down. Did you see that? So now, as I'm continuing to rotate the engine, the needle is going back down. See how, like, there? But then if I reverse, we could find the very top. All right, so it looks like about four degrees on our gauge here. We'll set your zero. And then just check it. So continue through the rotation process. Reverse. Make sure that zero is your highest point. Well, just a tiny bit. Right there. Perfect. So now you know exactly where top dead center is. Pretty straightforward. Uh, just make sure you get yourself a deck bridge, magnetic or non-magnetic, your choice, dial gauge, that easy. Alrighty, so let's get this timing set in. Now I am going to be reusing the timing set I currently put on. I put on a double roller from Comp. It maybe has, I don't know, a couple thousand miles, two thousand miles at best. So, still good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this. And um, if you can see way down here, our zero mark is pointing straight up. And that's because we just set our top zero at number one cylinder. So this is pointing straight up. And uh, we're gonna match that to the dot uh, here on our sprocket. Now some, some gears, they have an option where you can run it advanced, or retarded, or at zero. Um, some of them have a couple options like this, some of them have quite a few options. Uh, you got to do whatever works best for your application. If you're guessing, use zero. If you're, if you're completely not sure what to do, just start with zero, because you can always change this later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our zero mark and put it down. So you'll notice the little tab on the cam doesn't match up. So now that we know that, that zero is set here, we can set zero here and make that tab match up. And we will be degreeing the cam later on. Right now, we're just trying to get it zeroed out and we'll check, we'll check the, the uh, cam timing in just a little bit. Should be fine though. Just like that. And so now that we're using a hydraulic roller camshaft in this Gen 1 small block Chevy, we're going to use a cam button. So they make a couple different varieties of these and they've got nylon one, um, but we're going to be using a Cloy's timing cover and it has an adjustable built in cam button. So pretty trick set up. I'll show you that in a little while, uh, but it makes doing that adjustment really easy. 
So you need a little bit of play in your uh, in your camshaft, but you don't need a whole lot. So we're going to measure that with our with our dial gauge and dial gauge mount, and make sure that that is all in spec. So we can see here we got our dot to dot, perfect. And then front, right? <laughs> don't go putting this backwards. Just in case you couldn't see, a dot, a dot. And these are those uh, advanced or retard tabs I was talking about. They go in your keyway there. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. But dot to dot, that's what you're looking for. All right, so pumped. Just got the new valves in. So I'm going to show you real quick uh, how to check your valve spring install height. So we need to account for our locator. We know it's 60 thou thick. So we're going to grab a 60 thou shim. Put that down there first. Then we're going to get our valve height checker. And you want the larger end on towards the head and the smaller end towards your retainer. Put that down. And grab your spring retainer. Put that down there. And grab a couple of locks. And you might have to dance with this a little bit to make it stay. There you go. And now push it down so it's all locked in there. And then hold here and rotate the height checker out. There you go, nice and snug, and then find where your lines are. Nothing is labeled, so that's nice and helpful. Uh, if you can see here, so we can see on there, we can see just the top of the 8 and this 20. What does that mean? Who knows? But now we have a known value we can check against. So once, once you got your known values, go ahead and just reverse, take it off. And then we can check it with our calipers. So we're going to grab this and then go find the 20. Let's recreate what we just measured. Right there. And so next, we can get a caliper that we know is calibrated and good to go. We can measure that. So we have here, make sure I can get that nice and lined up, 7 and 90 two thousands awesome we can deal with that way better than being a quarter inch off so now uh, this one we're pretending is our spring locator so what we can do is we can grab another 60 put it down and we can grab a 15 put that down and then we can check again what our height is and i would recommend doing this for each one of your springs I know it takes some time, but it's worth it. So you know all this, whoop, all this is hooked up the way it's supposed to be. Oh, got it. So what you don't want is to drop a valve. Drop a valve, engine is done, and all your work is for nothing. So, let's get this in there. it in do the same thing right there feels pretty snug all right so this time we got seven and let's call that 31 if you can see that or is that 35 yeah seven and 35 all right yeah, that feels pretty good so now we can undo this and check that measurement there seven and 35 don't forget Take this back to where we were. Put there. Now let's check this measurement. Boom, look at that. Check it a couple times just to be sure. We're at about seven and ten thousandths. Pretty dang close. And from what I've read, what I've read, excuse me, is that if you want to be anywhere within twenty thousandths of your install spring height. So right now, we're at 
1.7, I don't know, let's call it a 0, 8. So not bad. That is going to work much better. So now we're just using a couple of shims. So we have a 60, and then we're going to use a 15, and then we got our spring locator. So it'll work out like this, and that's much better. See, before I had, I think, four 60 thousandths shims, and the stack was huge. So <laughs> this should work a lot better, and we'll get our springs installed, and now we can move on with this build. Yes. All right, now let's get these heads assembled. All right, so first up, find your the correct valves for your cylinder here. So we're going to start with the number one cylinder, which will be right here. Grab our number one intake valve, put that in. Exhaust valve. All right, so we went through and measured how much shims we're going to need, including our locators. So now that we know those values, we can go ahead and grab the correct shims. So we're going to grab one 15 thousandths, one 60 thousandths. We're going to lay those down each, each of our spots here. Grab your locator. And it really helps to have a nice clean area with all your ports organized. So if you can if you can see, I got everything laid out. Little boxes, make it nice and easy to see what I got. Make sure I'm not mixing anything up. Alright, so then after that, you can don't forget your seals. It's very easy to forget your seals in here. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna press these down a bit. And just fit that loosely and I'm finding that these um, these seals fit very very tight so start it start it with your hand kind of get it lined up and then find the correct size socket that works that'll fit around the perimeter here and just give her a couple taps in so that way it seats all the way like down as far as it's gonna go There you go. And if it's a little crooked, just grab one edge, just knock it a little bit. That should do it. And now push your valves back up. There you go. Should go nice and easy. You see how that one's a little crooked still? It's just not quite coming through right. So let's make sure we can fix that. All right, so on this one, I think we're gonna go ahead and back off restart not too sure why this one's giving us a hard time there we go so that worked pretty good all right so i guess instead of backing off we're just going to use some channel locks to wedge it in the right way all right so and then you want to do a quick test make sure that this slides very easily that it's getting bound up Good to go there. All right, so now that we got the our two shims we need, we got our locator down. Let's grab our springs. Put your springs down, and then you're also going to need your spring retainers. All right, then I'm going to show you the tool we're going to use. This is tools from Amazon. It's designed for an LS, and I chose this on purpose because uh, they're. Uh, I don't know if it's all or at least some LS use beehive springs and they have these smaller style retainers so on this tool here that that little uh, the spring retainer fits right inside of there in this little channel here and I'll show you in just a second but what I had to do since this is these are small block Chevy heads is I had to bore out the 
holes on the little tool here to fit the 7 16 uh, stud that's going to be going in there. Um, so we just get your 7 16 bolt and I, like I said I bored it out and then what we're going to do is fit this all loosely and you kind of got to line it up as you go and I'll just kind of show you right here. Don't torque it down quite yet. You want to leave it kind of loose. I'll back off here a little bit. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that our springs are going to go down straight and our valves um, are right in the middle of the hole here. So you'll see it's kind of it's kind of off and this this mount is angled so it's going to kind of go forward and down a little bit when you once it uh, we start screwing that bolt down. So if they look a little bit more biased towards the bottom, that's okay. But what you want to do is make sure they're centered at least. And just Sometimes the little keepers get stuck in there. I just knock them around until you get them lined up. All right, that about right there looks okay. If they're not perfect, that's all right. I'll show you how to deal with that once we get there. So that looks pretty good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna snug down our base here. You don't need to go crazy, just nice and nice and snug will do just fine. If you can't tell, we're using grade eight hardware on the bottom. And this bolt that came with the kit is grade 8.8, .8, but it's from Amazon, so you never really know. All right, so as we were tightening that down, looks like this one moved a little bit. What I like to do is get you a little mini pry bar and just kind of nudge it into place if you have to. Like that. Give her a little whack if you need to. There we go. Right, so now we can tighten down the top bolt. And I'm not gonna lie, this is, this is pretty sketch. So eye protection, if you're not wearing it already, I typically do and when I'm doing this right here. And don't look straight at it, treat it like a gun. Don't look straight down that barrel. So I'm off to the side here right now. You can't see me here in front of me. But as you get tightened it down there, keep an eye on your valve. So see how this one's up here? That one's way down there. Kinda gonna need to push. And if you need to go from the bottom and knock it up. There you go, just like that. Because when you're doing this, the valve is, it really shouldn't move a whole lot because the springs are going around them, right? And we're going to go almost all the way down on the tool. There you go. Looks like that one's sticking again. And once you get a ways down, it's going to fight you. So this is going to scare some people for sure. So if it's sticking there, get your little tiny hammer and just gently tap it. There we go. See how it's nice and even? So keep going. And you want all of the lock area exposed. So then once you got that, grab some of your keepers, place them in, and like I said before, it may not line up right away. You might get one side in, other side doesn't want to go in. You might not get either sides in. That's when you get out your little pry bar tool again. Like this. Just give her a little wiggle. And the cool thing about doing it this way is that if you need to, um, you can kind of let everything settle as you're, as you're loosening this whole system and everything will sort of find its way home. You can go slow, if you need to back up, you can back up.
There we go. Just like that, right there. So now we can back the tool out slowly and just help guide everything home if we need to. There you go, and you'll feel once the keeper's got it, it'll get pretty easy. See the bolt way up here. This little bracket here might get a little stuck on you, so you might have to give it a little nudge. There you go. So, well, it's not, it doesn't feel safe. I'll tell you that. It, it seems to be, it just doesn't feel safe because it's like, like I said, pointing a loaded gun at your face and just trusting that it won't go off when you're messing around with the trigger, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it works pretty good I'll go ahead and knock the rest of these out so that's all together now let's throw on the push rod guides and the uh, rocker arm studs so that's pretty easy I'm not going to do a final torque on these right now uh, I just want to get them in so that way I can know that they're in there and not lost in a box somewhere Cool. So let's go make sure our deck is ready. Lay down the head gasket and let's put this baby on. Alrighty, so now for the uh, head gasket, we're going to use Fell Pro Permatorque 501 SD, the heavy duty version. So when you're measuring your quench, you need to take into account your head gasket. Um, I probably won't go over quench here. But just know it's something you need to measure. You can't just throw any head gasket on there and call it good. Uh, your quench is going to affect your power. So just know that. I'm going to go ahead and get this put on real quick. Oh, for this specific head gasket, there is no up. I checked around. People had the same question. There's no up. It's exactly the same on both sides. So whichever one feels good to you, go ahead and do it. We're going to go with this one. I think. No, let's do this one. All right, and then make sure your little locators push down on both sides. And you're good to go. This is your last chance to do anything else you need to do in here. I wiped out the cylinders. I sprayed a little bit of WD-40. You might see that on there. Uh, but this is it. It's your last chance. So make sure you're done. Make sure all of your studs are in there, nice and hand tight. I mean, if you use uh, like a impact driver with a three eighths adapter. On the lowest setting, that's what I did. You just run them down. And also, when you're using thread sealant, if anyone has a better way to do it than I did, please let me know, because that made a huge mess. It was really annoying to deal with. And overall, it was just not, not a good experience. <laughs> Let's get that head on. There you go. Just take a second. Make sure it's fully seated. Sometimes there's... Um, Either a bit of buildup on the locators on the outer edges, or just something is a little bit off. So take a second. Don't start going crazy with the nuts yet. Make sure it's fully seated. It just looks like it is. That is not getting some trouble. All right. So now we're treating these just like AFR enforcers. So once we get all of the hardware on, we need to do our torque sequence. So let me show you how I put on all the hardware. This is the hardware that came with our kit. I did double check because some people say that you get your hardware, you get to this step right here, and there's not enough. And when you're building an engine, having too little parts or too many parts left over at the end, not a good thing. Okay, so at this point, we're going to pause before we start putting the nuts on. And then let me see if I can get you in a little bit better spot here. Now there are 17 nuts we're going to be putting on here. And the problem with some of these is that they're way down in there. And I know my fat fingers won't be able to reach down there. So this is what I do. 
get your ARP uh, Molly grease, insulation grease, whatever they call it, and you just squeeze it all out onto a piece of cardboard or something. And then, not gonna lie, I stole this paintbrush from my daughter's painting supplies. And we're just gonna use that to reach way down and put the grease on all these studs. So this is the time. Get your, get your Picasso on, get your little brush, dip it in your grease, and just put it all around your studs. And make sure you do each and every one of them. Cool, now that we got that on, let's go ahead and put on all the nuts. Just gonna start these by hand, catch a couple threads, and then we're gonna come back with the impact driver and just run them down. I'm not gonna be doing any torquing with that. I'm just gonna do the, uh, let's get them down to the bottom. All right, torque sequence we're gonna do, we're gonna start at 40 foot pounds, we're gonna go up in at 250, and then we're gonna go up to 65. We're gonna end up at the factory spec, but we're gonna take it in steps, because this is an aluminum head, not an iron head. So, I don't know if you can see, torque wrench set to 40. Maybe, maybe you can't see, but we're gonna do it just in from the center, just in a rotating pattern out. Kind of the same as you would do any head. All right, this thing is really coming together. So pumped. Can't wait to get this thing fired up. All right, so now we're gonna, we're just gonna lay the rockers on and I'll show you how to measure for push rod length. We'll get the checker out and I'll show you how to knock that out. So first up, what we're gonna do on this number one cylinder, we're gonna run these down. I'm gonna get these torqued down to 50 foot pounds. And this is just temporary. Uh, there's no uh, blue Loctite on any of this yet. This is just dry because all we need to do right now is get that measured. So I'm gonna throw in one set of lifters and then put uh, probably a couple rockers on and then we'll measure that length. All right, first step in measuring push rod length, get out your layout fluid again and just color the tips of these. If you know which one you're gonna be doing, just go ahead and do the one. I'm just gonna be doing the number one exhaust. If you wanna measure them all, you can, but I won't be doing that here today. Once you get that on there, give it a second to dry. And then we're gonna get our rocker arm and we're using a full roller rocker, roller tip, roller body. And one thing on these is when you're installing them, make sure you can see that there, one of these sides has a flat recess, one of these sides does not. Make sure you use the side with a flat recess up. So um, another thing too, is when you're putting this all together finally, you want to make sure that your push rod guide, make sure that ensures that your rocker is center on the tip. Not super important right now, but once we get to do that uh, for the final assembly, we're gonna make sure that's nice and center before we get these torqued down. So, here we go. All right, now, your push rod length checker. This is a trick flow, 6.8 to 7.8. And then all you gotta do is fish it down and put it on top of your lifter. Touch your rocker on. Oh. Make sure it's in a little pocket. And then you grab your uh, poly lock, get it started. And what we're going to do here is we're going to um, tighten down the poly lock until we feel no play, no play here. So as you see, way too much. And lots of debate on whether you should do the spinning method or the up and down method. Um, to be honest, they're probably the same. But I do the up and down method. Lots of debate on that. Do what works best for you. How about that? So no more, no more play there. Side to side play is decent because we've got our valve guide or push rod guide in there. And let's loosen it back up. Make sure we find zero lash. 
about there. All right, so now we've got zero lash there. Get out your wrench, and we're going to do one half turn past zero lash. Boom, right there. So a quick note too, uh, when you're doing these hydraulic roller lifters, you want the, whatever you're measuring intake or exhaust at its base circle. All right, so now that we've got that in there, that's nice and um, nice and adjusted. And uh, w what you can do is uh, you can expand that tool or shorten it down to simulate different lengths. So now that our layout fluid is dry, what we're going to do is going to roll the engine around a couple times. And this is my setup for rolling the engine around when you're uh, when you're measuring all these things. So I have the balancer just sitting on there. I measured top dead center already with your uh, deck high checker. And I got a little piece of welding wire pointing it at zero so we know where we're at. So all you do is you get to the right hard. This is, these are fine thread, by the way. Uh, they are 3 8 fine thread. And you will put those in there to simulate uh, your bolts that hold on the, all the uh, accessory drive. And then you get these little nuts and you tighten these down. So that way it keeps it nice and nice and firm on there. And then you just grab, grab whatever and you roll the engine around. There we go. So now we see we got some action going on on that exhaust cylinder or exhaust valve. Keep going. We want to go a full cycle. Boom. All right. So just, just closed. So now we'll just undo that and take it off. And let me get you in to look at your wear pattern. So you can go through this a couple times if you need to, but we got a pretty good, pretty good visual here. So let's see if this works. There we go. So you can see right there in the middle, the wear pattern starts right where my fingernail is. And what you're looking for is you want to see the wear pattern on the middle of your valve tip. You don't want it coming off on either side, that'll end you up in a bad day. So since uh, the wear pattern is a little bit on this, on the upper side, you know that your push rod is a little too short. So what you need to do is lengthen it up and to get that wear pattern down to the middle. What you do after that, grab some more layout fluid, put it down and just repeat the process and make sure you grab the uh, push rod here and you loosen it to lengthen it up so right there that's probably all you need right there just repeat the process Alrighty, now that we have a good pattern on our valve tip, what we're going to do is we're going to measure our push rod with the most accurate way we possibly can. Tip measure. So all you got to do is just measure this guy. So that's coming to just about a 7 inch push rod, as you can see there. Cool. So now we know what length we need. and we can order them up, and at this point of the build, that's kind of where you're, where you're at. You can't go much farther without the push rods. You can't assemble the valve chain. You can't set anything. You can't really torque the rocker arms, studs down. You need the push rods to continue, so that's kind of where you got to stop at this point. All right, guys, that's going to do it for now. We're at a great point in this build. I hope you picked up a tip or a trick along the way, and don't forget, you don't need to be a professional engine builder to build your own power plant. So if you do me a favor, like and subscribe, and like I always say, don't be afraid to dive into your next project. See you next time.